Welcome to the training for the new production schedule in cloud application. This is number seven out of 12 presentations. In this lesson, we explore the many constraints and objectives that drive the production schedule generation. Let's start with the constraints. Obvious constraints are around the machine and labor capacity their availability or non-availability, and their capability or skill sets. With respect to capability or skill set, not every manufacturing task can be performed on every machine and similar for labor pools with their specific skill sets. While not every nut and bolt should be included in a scheduling model, there may be a few key materials and components whose availability shall be considered during schedule generation. A less obvious constraint is around changeover rules. After producing the last unit of a certain item on a machine, this machine must be prepared for production of the first unit of a different item. The time it takes to do so needs to be considered so that capacity is consumed correctly. Finally, most manufacturing environments require more than just one production stage to create a product. As an example, components are fabricated, assembled, then packaged. Each of those processes may require numerous steps, all of which must be scheduled in proper order. Once all relevant constraints are respected, you will get an executable production schedule. Most of these constraints are managed via setup of work center resources, work definitions, and item structures in manufacturing work execution. Additional data maintenance within production scheduling takes care of changeover rules, as well as the activation of resource constraints. Best practice and finite capacity scheduling is to focus on key bottleneck resources and have only those drive the schedule results. Therefore, all work center resources will by default be treated as relaxed, meaning that calendar and capacity constraints are not respected, or rather they are not enforced. Individual resource constraints are explicitly activated in the manage resource parameters page. Here, add the resources of interest and choose the appropriate constraint mode. The three different constraint modes shown in the table at the bottom right there are explained next. This example highlights three different constraint modes. Machine M1 is constrained. Both capacity and availability are respected. So when you see the representation in the gun chart, operations do not overlap one another and they are not overlapping with downtimes either. Machine M2 is relaxed for capacity only. Therefore, its capacity constraint can be violated meaning that operations can overlap and exceed available capacity at that time. However, the calendar constraints are still respected. And machine M3 in this example is relaxed. Operations can overlap and violate the capacity constraints and they can also be scheduled on top of calendar events. The availability of materials and components is another aspect that impact feasibility of a schedule. Supplies and demands for an item are aligned along the schedule horizon such that the inventory level is positive. Note that if there is an imbalance such that all demand exceeds all supplies for an item in a scheduling model, which could happen for various reasons, 
then production scheduling will ignore this item's inventory level constraint. Multi-stage manufacturing has two distinct relationships between stages. First, the set of operations within a roading form task dependencies between the operations. Operation 1010 must be completed before operation 1020 can start and so on. Then, if a component is manufactured by a work order one, and this component is consumed by a work order number two, then this is an inventory relationship and requires work order two to be scheduled after work order number one produces that item. Next, changeover relationships are another set of constraints. When changing a resource from manufacturing one item to producing another item, then the time needed to perform the necessary setup or cleanup tasks on that machine must be accounted for. The next topic discusses various objectives that are relevant in scheduling. Several different business objectives are relevant during schedule generation. These include on-time completion, changeovers, resource utilization, make span and inventory levels. While optimizing a schedule with respect to just one of these objectives in a real world scheduling model is not an easy task. The complexity increases enormously when considering all objectives at the same time. Of course, we always have to have the active constraints in mind as well. Further, some of these objectives are in direct conflict with one another. Oracle production scheduling respects all active constraints and aims to balance conflicting objectives by applying a set of smart heuristic decision-making and simulation capabilities. The last topic of this lesson addresses once more changeovers and user-defined sequences. We want to point out that changeovers have the nature of both constraints and objectives at the same time. Properly accounting for changeovers that consume resource capacity essentially corresponds to considering a constraint. At the same time, we have smart sequencing decisions. The total amount of time needed for changeovers can be reduced. And that aspect, the minimization of changeover time is an objective in scheduling. Less changeover time equates to a gain of capacity and it can result in improved throughput and of course it saves costs. Now, in some manufacturing environments, specifically in process industry, achieving good or near optimal attribute sequences is the overriding objective, since it has a big impact on overall throughput and ultimately the bottom line. Most scheduling solutions for real world problems require the usage of heuristic methods. And therefore the resulting schedules will typically not be optimal from a changeover perspective. And production scheduling cloud is no exception. Since in such environments, a good and desirable attribute sequence is often known the solution to this issue is to allow defining such attribute sequence by resource and have the scheduled generation try to respect such sequences. In order to make use of the user-defined attribute sequence functionality, the schedule must use scheduling buckets, which are defined in the schedule options. For a given resource, which shall be considered for user-defined attribute sequencing, check the resource parameter apply user-defined sequence within the manage resource parameters page, which is accessed from a scheduling organization.
production scheduling will allocate work orders into scheduling buckets based on their need by date, then sort them in that bucket as specified in the user-defined attribute sequence. And whatever does not fit into the current scheduling bucket will spill over into the next bucket and consume the beginning of that bucket's capacity. In the following demonstration, we will change the constraint mode for resources using the resource parameters page and uh, evaluate the impact after a refresh and solve. So here we have our list of schedules. I will open this car temp one. And we see that the resources seem to be relaxed since operations overlap one another. We can also confirm that in the dispatch list down here. We see that many operations are scheduled at the same time, which of course is not feasible. Uh, we also observe that none of the operations from injection molding one have been offloaded to injection molding two. Uh, there is no reason to do so because if constraints are not enforced, uh, I don't have to offload. Now let's make a change to the underlying data. This is for organization M2. So let's go to the scheduling organizations and select our M2. Go to the resource parameters. And now what do we see? We see that all the resources in this model are relaxed for capacity. Let's let's take the injection molding resources and say we want to constrain them. In order for this to take effect, we have to refresh and solve the schedule. This, of course, discards the current solution that we have. And now the solve is actually first a refresh. And then the solve is kicked off. It runs and it will be done in a few seconds. Okay, now completed. So let's open the schedule. Oh, let's this one. And now we should see that constraints are now enforced for this resource for injection molding one and injection molding two, meaning operations do not overlap one another. And the solver made decisions to offload some of the operations from injection molding one to injection molding two. The extruder was still relaxed. So there we do see overlapping operations, but we will not see them in the other two resources. Okay, observe that the, um, the calendar event is, uh, is actually enforced. The operation here, uh, still only takes, where are we? Only takes, uh, 10 hours. It is just delayed over that calendar event. So during this lesson, you gained an understanding of the key constraints and objectives that are considered during schedule generation. You also learn that changeovers can be considered both constraint and objective at the same time. And we saw how 
you can activate constraints using resource parameters and observe their impact after subsequent solve.